Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a 2018 South Korean superhero film, titled Psychokinesis. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In Seoul, South Korea, Shin Rumi runs a very successful fried chicken restaurant at a very young age. She hasn't gone to college because she wants to work to help her mother, who had to make an extra effort after her father abandoned them when she was just a child. Rumi and the owners of the other shops in the neighborhood find themselves in trouble when a mob-run construction company Taesan, buys the land and plans to demolish all the buildings in order to build a large shopping mall for tourists without compensating the small business owners in the process. One night, Rumi is woken up by a group of hired thugs that arrives at the area and forcibly takes her out of her own place. Her mother arrives shortly after and isn't allowed to enter either, so she gets in her van and drives through them to make them move away. However, her plan is short-lived, the men quickly regroup and drag her out of the van as well, only to drop her on the ground when she tries to struggle out of their grasp. She hits her head on the edge of the sidewalk and instantly loses consciousness, causing the thugs to back away as the neighbors arrive to help a crying Rumi and take them to the hospital. Sadly, her mother dies during surgery, and as she cries one last tear, a meteor lands on the mountains and infuses the local spring with a special energy. The next morning, Rumi's father, Shin Sa Khan, drinks that water when he visits the area and notices it has a bad taste. Afterward, he goes to his job at the bank, where he works as a security guard. While chatting with the cleaning lady, he shows her how he always steals coffee packets from the waiting room, sometimes toilet paper too, and encourages her to do the same as he shares one with her. He also complains about an upset stomach, which he blames on the spring water. Hours later, when his shift is over, the other guard scolds him for always arriving late, but he doesn't care and calls him a nagger. He also sees the cleaning lady being scolded by their superior, who has found all the coffee packets she stole. Sok Han pretends he doesn't see them and walks away, but he does think the cleaning lady had been dumb for taking so many at the same time, making it noticeable. Later in the evening, he is having a snack at a small market when his stomach starts hurting rather badly. As he agonizes on top of the table, various objects around him start moving on their own, and suddenly, all the tables and chairs around him move back as if they had been pushed. At least the pain is gone now, but Sok Han doesn't have much time to enjoy his newfound relief, the shop owner isn't happy with what he's done with his table, so he kicks him out. Moments later, Sok Han gets back to his very dirty and small apartment and lies down on the mattress as he puts a cigarette in his mouth. When he reaches out to grab the lighter, it flies directly to his hand, which freaks him out a little. However, he doesn't get to examine the situation much further because he's interrupted by his phone ringing, it's his daughter, letting him know her mother has died. Sok Han puts on an old suit and goes to the funeral, where he walks past Rumi, not recognizing her at first because he hasn't seen her in years. Their meeting is rather awkward, and they don't get to talk much anyway because the funeral is suddenly crashed by President Min, the man in charge of Tae San's operations, and his thugs. Rumi calls him out for coming, saying they should only see each other at court, but Min pretends to be upset and stressed, saying her mother died while driving and they shouldn't be blamed for it. Furious, Rumi tries to kick them out, but before things can get violent, her lawyer Kim Jong Hyun cuts in and tells Min this should be decided by the law. Before leaving, Min tries to give her condolence money, but Rumi turns it down. While the neighbors comfort her, Jung Hyun introduces himself to Sok Han and takes him around the neighborhood to show him the damage the thugs have done to the local businesses. Sok Han looks a bit sad when he sees the restaurant destroyed but doesn't get involved in the conversation, he just accuses Jung Hyun of only helping Rumi to get in her pants before leaving. On his way home, he remembers the cold way Rumi looked at him and makes an angry gesture with his hand, causing a pile of trash to be thrown back as if he had pushed it. He remembers what he had done with the lighter and rushes back to his apartment, where practicing with the lighter proves his theory, he has telekinetic powers. Soon he's moving every object on the floor at the same time. Afterward, he goes to visit his fellow guard at the bank and asks him if illusionists make good money, the man tells him of the nightclub down the street where some performers make up to a million a night. The next morning, after leaving her mom's body at the cemetery alcoves, Rumi returns with her father and friends to the shopping arcade where all the shop owners are hiding from the thugs that are camping down the street. They have been around the area a lot, breaking windows, leaving graffitis, and causing scenes. Jung Hyun asks them to be patient while he continues to meet with the prosecutor, but most of them believe the law will be bought by the construction company. While discussing how to protect the place, Mr. Kim and his wife propose to get a bit more violent, perhaps even using Molotov bombs like they've seen other rebels do. The thugs have been violent with them, after all, but Jung Hyun thinks that will only make them look worse in the eyes of the public. Sok Han interrupts the conversation then to tell everyone this is too dangerous and they can't win, so they should all find a new job and Rumi should allow him to help her, perhaps even go to college as well. This attitude infuriates the neighbors who start yelling at him, so Rumi kicks him out. In the evening, Sok Han goes to the nightclub and shows his powers to the owner, who immediately hires him as a performer. The following day, 
Rumi and Jung Hyun meet with the prosecutor's supervisor, but he doesn't bring good news. The autopsy report isn't enough to prove anything, since it only shows the bruise and Rumi's mother could have acquired it by falling herself. The only other evidence they had was a security camera from a nearby car, but the owner claimed it was fake after Tae San bought him out. After lunch, Jung Hyun insists on helping her get her van out even if he has other things he should be doing. When she arrives at her neighborhood, she ignores Sok Han, who has been waiting for her after she didn't pick up any of his calls. He asks her to have a private chat, and once they're far from curious ears, he tells her he wants her to live with him and go to college, and that he's earned enough money to support her. To prove it, he uses his powers to make some silly tricks with a tie, then makes various objects in the room float, but Rumi doesn't believe him, thinking they're just parlor tricks. She gets rather angry and calls him very irresponsible for wasting time with magic tricks, pointing out he's just running away the same way he did when she was 10. Sok Han tries to explain he divorced his wife to protect her and Rumi from the debts his father left him, but Rumi doesn't believe this is the only reason, she clearly remembers how he pretended not to see her the day he left. Crying, she says having him trying to act like a dad after so long is disgusting, and leaves. While walking away, he notices Min and his men getting in their cars ready to attack and decides to follow them. Back in the arcade, the shop owners are alerted of this, so Mr. Kim and his wife go to find the police while the others barricade the entrances. When the thugs arrive, they manage to break the barrier and get in, assaulting all the neighbors while Min's assistant records everything with his camera. The shop owners are clearly at disadvantage here, but soon things turn in their favor when Sok Han arrives and begins using his powers. He pushes all thugs back, tossing them around or even throwing things at them until they're separated from the civilians. These men get scared quickly, not listening to Min when he orders them to attack. Only one of them dares to come forward, and Sok Han twists his arm and makes him float in front of everyone. Mr. Kim returns with the police then, and everyone is taken to the precinct, where both sides start arguing and blaming each other for what happened. The officer isn't happy with all these people making a scene in his office, so he decides to watch the recording and decide from there. The video shows Sok Han using his powers, so of course the cop thinks it's all a performance. Without any proper evidence to arrest anyone, he sends them all away. The shop owners show sad expressions at first, but as soon as they are far enough from the precinct, they start laughing and celebrating having finally won one battle again Min and his men, and they start gaining some hope now they have Sok Han on their side, even if Rumi doesn't look too amused by the idea of having him around so much. Later in the evening, the thugs that are camping outside the neighborhood see some trash floating around, and they run away when they see their car joining it. It's Sok Han, who is using his powers to create an extremely strong barricade around the market to protect the local businesses. When Jung Hyun asks him how he acquired these powers, Sok Han says he thinks they were given to him by his ex-wife so he could be a better father. Then, Jung Hyun tells Rumi that her father had only been against this plan because he doesn't want her to get hurt, and the reason why he gave Rumi a name that means lowly and weak is because of an old tradition that says ghosts would only take kids with noble-sounding names, not because he thought badly of her. Meanwhile, the men that had been camping at the market go back to men and tell him they want to quit because they're scared. But he doesn't have time for them, he's worried because he's received a call from the company owner, who isn't happy with the lack of progress. The next day, Rumi gives an interview to a small local channel, hoping to get some support from the public, and reluctantly accepts to have lunch with her dad. She tells him he should see a doctor in case these powers are damaging his body, but he promises he is fine. At the same time, Min and his assistant are having lunch with Director Hong, the owner of the company who can go from nice and smiling to absolutely nuts in seconds. After discussing the food, she calls for her own thugs to come in and beat Min up while she records herself on the phone pretending she doesn't know these violent people and she's also a victim, this is a strategy her legal team provided so she doesn't get sued later. When they start discussing business, Hong reveals she already knows about Sok Han because she saw the video, and Min swears they could easily evict all the shop owners if it wasn't for him. Hong tells him this is something very simple that she'll take care of. Later in the evening, a recording of Sok Han using his powers appears on TV, and a so-called expert claims he's using special shockwave weapons given to him by North Korea. 48 hours later, two cops show up by the barricade to arrest Sok Han, since his bank employers accuse him of theft. Thinking it's just a misunderstanding that can be cleared up without causing a scene, Sok Han accepts to go with them, only to be handcuffed and kept in custody. Rumi calls Jung Hyun to ask for his help, and he promises he will be there soon before picking up another call with even worse news, it's the prosecutor, informing him that one of Tae San's employees has turned himself in for killing Rumi's mother. This is all part of Hong's plan. They've paid off one of their men that was desperate for money to quickly close the murder case, then she's ordered Min to close his company and start another under a different name and draw up a new contract to legally demolish the local businesses. Hong uses her connections to gain support from the police, so after Sok Han is removed from the equation, a large group of officers arrives at the market, led by Min and his thugs. Jung Hyun calls Rumi to tell her all of this and ask her to run away, 
but Rumi hangs up on him after expressing her wish to fight until the end. Meanwhile, Hong visits Sok Han at the precinct to make him an offer, he should work for her and her company, or she'll release a statement that marks him as dangerous for the public. She also jokes about a hidden option 3, being him actually going out there and winning the fight, which she thinks is impossible. Hong says she'll give him some time to think about it before giving him her business card and leaving. With the presence of the press around them, the cops try to advance against the barricade, but Rumi and her friends keep them at bay by using Molotov bombs. They have no choice to run away, however, when the police bring over an excavator that they start using to destroy the barricade. While everyone runs, Rumi falls and sees Mr. Kim is stuck under some debris. She goes to him and helps him get out at the same time the barricade explodes, pushing them both away from the area. Fortunately, the other rioters find them and help them come inside. The police officers manage to break into the market area, and now they've surrounded every entrance, it's almost impossible for Jung Hyun to get in to help. He calls Rumi, who is with the other shop owners at the arcade trying to keep the door closed, and he tells her everyone should escape to the roof or they'll get arrested. All this is being shown on TV, so Sok Han learns about it when the cops tune in. They turn the TV off when they see him watch though, so Sok Han uses his powers to take a phone from one of the officers and see what's going on. Remembering the last time he failed his daughter, he decides he won't allow this to happen again and proceeds to break his handcuffs before opening a hole in the cell's door. With an explosion, he escapes the precinct by jumping through a window and landing near Hong, and as soon as he sees her, he revengefully destroys her car. He gets away by discovering he can use his telekinesis to fly, but after a few miles, he hits a building and falls to the ground. A giant screen that shows the riots reminds him not to give up, so after taking a couple of big leaps that push away the cars on the streets, he takes flight once again. Back in the neighborhood, Rumi and the others all make it to the roof except for Mr. Kim, who is pushed off by the police and is left hanging on the railing of the stairs. The cops start aiming their water cannons at him, causing him to slip and fall, but Sok Han arrives just in time and rescues him in midair. He leaves him on the roof of a building far from the area before flying back, ready to help until he accidentally crashes against a portable building suspended on a crane that the police are using to get more cops on the roof. Sok Han bounces off this box and enters the building through a window to find himself surrounded by more officers, who attack him with a fire extinguisher to blurry his vision. A pile of cops jumps on Sok Han and keeps him on the ground, but this is still not enough, and his powers easily push them away. Using some furniture to destroy the windows, he flies away, ready for more action. In the meantime, Jung Hyun has managed to reach the roof of a nearby building, and he puts down a staircase between both roofs so that his friends can cross over. Unfortunately, it's too late for Rumi, who is captured by the cops in the suspended box. Another group of officers arrives through the normal stairs and starts assaulting the shop owners until Sok Han arrives and pushes them all away. Once again, all the cops jump on him together, but they aren't a match for his powers and he easily knocks them out while Jung Hyun helps everyone cross over. After taking care of all the remaining police officers, Sok Han uses his powers to push every neighbor to the other roof in one go before going to look for his daughter. The suspended box starts losing stability, but Min tells the cops not to be cowards and stay there to arrest everyone. The crane suddenly hits a building by accident and one of the box suspenders breaks, causing an officer to slip out, only barely saving himself by holding on to the open door. Rumi sees this and tries to help him, first alone but soon with other cops helping her as her father finally comes over and makes an extra effort with his powers to bring the box over to the roof. When the portable building lands, the shaking makes Rumi fall, but Sok Han doesn't hesitate and flies after her, rescuing her right before she hits the ground. After apologizing to her for everything, she leaves her with her friends and asks Jung Hyun to take good care of her before flying away to meet Min. He tells him they've won right before punching him, but afterward, he puts up no resistance and turns himself into the police, who waste no time and arrest him. Four years later, Sok Han is released from prison and is picked up by Jung Hyun, who tells him he's engaged to Rumi. When they drive by the area her old restaurant used to be at, there's nothing but an unoccupied plot, it turns out Taesan's project was not profitable and construction has been delayed. When night falls, they make it to a new restaurant where all their old friends are having dinner and happily receive him with open arms when they see him. His daughter is there too, and Sok Han discovers this is Rumi's new business. At her request, he uses his powers to help her serve the beer mugs as he notices she's chosen the name Superpower Chicken. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.